Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Cheruziak and today we are going to begin our series of Thanksgiving themed videos. We're going to start with the big one, how to fry a turkey. And we're going to start with a 12 pound bird. And this is going to be done, some of the preps are going to be done in the cave and then we're going to go outside and I'll actually show you the fryer, how we have it set up. First thing is the bird itself. you got to start with a thawed bird and if you can, start with a bird that you've brought out to the counter and let it sit at room temperature for about a half an hour before you do anything to it. After that, we're going to remove our neck, which will be on the top of it. It will be tucked into the uh, upper breast part. And then the giblets and the gravy part is down in the bottom. The next step is to get a good rub going. And the rub that I'm using today is mustard, uh, Italian herbs, little green onion, paprika, and also some garlic powder, salt and pepper. And I'll give you the exact recipe on the website, so make sure you check that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to coat this entire bird with this rub. All right, so our bird is well coated. I made sure I got inside the bird as well, all around it, evenly coated with this. And we're going to let it sit for another 15 minutes. What happens is the skin will actually dry out. It'll form a little pellicle, which is, it'll give us that crispy skin once it hits the oil. So you want to let it sit for another 15 minutes before you do anything with it. All right, so now being outside, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the components that go into actually frying that turkey. One, you're going to need a source of gas, so I'm going to use a propane tank. Uh, you're going to need a real powerful burner. This is going to be a uh, king cooker burner. It gets up to 125,000 BTUs. It's uh, not for the faint of heart. And two, you're going to need a big old stock pot that you can put oil in. And for a 12 pound bird, which is what we're going to be frying today, you need about three gallons of oil. Uh, the fourth thing that you're going to need is going to be a good thermometer. And so I have the thermometer sunk into the oil so I can get a good reading of what that oil temperature is going to be. Uh, and we'll just keep an eye on it. It will take about 45 minutes to an hour to get that oil up to temperature, even with such a powerful uh, burner because one, we're going to be doing this in November, it's going to be windy, it's going to be cold, so we have a lot of elements that we're going to be dealing with that we can't, we don't really have that to worry about when we're inside of a kitchen, dealing with the outdoors. Uh, a few things I also want to say with this is don't be a fool and do this in your garage, okay? Deal with the cold weather and do it outside when you're going to deep fry a turkey. All right, now we're going to go inside and we're going to check in our, on how our turkey's drying. All right, so our turkey's sitting on the counter. I just rechecked our oil. We're about 140 degrees right now, so we have plenty of time to wait. So let's go over some more safety tips when it comes to frying the turkey. One, make sure when you're, you're setting up your king uh, cooker or your fryer outside, make sure that it is on a flat surface. Two, make sure that it's away from your house. Again, I alluded to not doing it in the garage. I hear so many foolish stories about somebody burning down their house because they thought, well, it's too cold, I'm going to put it in the garage and it'll be fine. Don't do that. Get it away from it. Three, know your elements. If it's windy outside, see if you can get it closed on a side of a, an embankment or something or away from the wind so your flame doesn't blow out as you're lighting it. And with that also, rain. If it's raining out, you obviously can't do it because you don't want the water to get into the fryer. What happens when water goes into the fryer? It pops, it crackles, it has a tendency to spark up, and it can go everywhere. Four, please, 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 if you have kids, make sure that they are either well attended to or away from what you're doing because you don't want that fryer to accidentally tip over, create a big fire, and have a panic. And maybe five, if you're still leery about doing this at home, get yourself a good house ext fire extinguisher and just have it by uh, in hand somewhere so that if something did happen you could easily put it out and if there's a way to buy a regulator and they sell them at most hardware stores that have a quick shutoff valve get that if you're going to do this outside or if you're going to cook with propane at any time outside even for your grills so you can just shut them off very fast so if anything does get out of hand it's a real easy fix and you can control your your flames now let's go check on that oil one more time and we probably are ready to start deep frying this bird. Alright, so our turkey's been out for about 15 minutes after rubbing it and everything down. We checked our fryer oil. Our fryer oil is now at 400 degrees. 
want to start at 400 once the bird goes in, it drops down to 350. And my trusty assistant hand me my uh, set of tongs. The easiest way to do this, and most king fryers come with a uh, pouch that you can actually deep fry your turkey with. I'm pretty sure at one point in my life, I think I ran over with the car, so I uh, threw it away. So the other safe way is if you get a good pair of tongs, and you just gently lower that bird in there. It's gonna steam up, it's gonna boil and everything. You wanna keep an eye on your thermometer gauge. It will drop down in temperature a little bit. And once it does that, you want to monitor your temperature at 350. So we'll just keep an eye on this for the next 45 minutes until it's done. We'll take an internal te uh, temperature of it of about 165 to 175. And then we'll be all set to eat our turkey dinner. All right, so our turkey's been in for 45 minutes. A few steps that you want to do before you remove that uh, hot turkey from that hot oil. Make sure you turn your fuel off. We'll shut the propane down. Then when you go to remove the turkey from the oil, get yourself either two pairs of tongs, a, a big ladle, something that can hold onto the belly side of that bird. And you're just going to slowly pull it out of that oil. Don't go too fast because the key is to remove as much of that oil from the bird as possible. I mean, even if I can, let it sit over it for a little bit and let some of that oil drain. If I get all the oil, then I can now transfer it over to a sheet tray and let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, look at how golden brown this is. It's just ready to be eaten. We're going to let it sit for about 15 minutes and then we can carve it up for turkey dinner. Coming back, we've let our turkey now um, rest for about 15 minutes. That fryer does a wonderful job of keeping the meat on the inside really juicy and tender as well as crisp up the skin. You know, the secret here is that it's being cooked from the inside and the outside. That's why you can get it done so much faster than in a traditional oven. A very simple uh, recipe, simple techniques that everyone has to try, if not this year, maybe next at your Thanksgiving. Again, thanks for joining us from the Cooking from the Cave, and have a great Thanksgiving, guys.